welcome to our daily horrors. I'm Economic Khan, and today I'm playing for the game Howard's New Toy, where we return home after a busy day to our house that we share with two talking animals, only to find that the cat has brought home a rather suspicious ancient relic. The summer of 1922, you are on your way home from work. It was a hard day. You are hungry and downhearted. Your feet ache. Uncomfortable boots are giving you shoe sores. You can't think straight. You are exhausted to the point of forgetting your own name. You stubbornly rummage through your memories. That's it. You're beginning to remember. Your name is... Uh, I forget. What is my name? Is old Is Oldie? Galatee? Nicolette? You definitely had a name. Okay. Oh, okay, my name is Meek. There we go. Even though I did like Galatee. Oh, yes, of course. Meek. You walked for an indefinite amount of time. At last, you reach the dusty old house you live in. You find a little rusty key inside your dirty, trash-filled pockets. We should probably clean those out at some point. You open the front door. The door creaks angrily, announcing your return. You have neither wife nor kids. Nevertheless, you are expected. A gentle dog called Tilda gives you a sheepish look. She nervously fumbles with her skirt. Her long, soft ears are trembling. <coughs> oh, thank God! Meek, you're back! And just in time! Yes, just in time indeed. <sighs> Is something the matter, Tilda? My baby. Who dares upset you? I'll chop off their head. <coughs> Don't touch my head, please. <coughs> Mr. Howard, he brought uh, some sort of object. Mysterious, blasphemous even. A vicious thing of a known origin. An artifact so dreadful, I can't stop shivering. Oh, Lord, I feel it in my bones. The primal horror. This object will bring us nothing but misery. I asked Howard to get rid of it, practically begged. But, you know, Mr. Howard never listens to me. You want to throw away the thing I bought? Of course I wouldn't listen to you. Besides, you're a scaremonger and a coward. You're probably afraid of your own shadow. <coughs> My shadow is quite scary. That is true. Especially when the teeth are showing. <coughs> See, told you so. Our Tilda is a sissy. Her worries are baseless. <sighs> All right, stop it, you two. Will anyone show me the dreadful artifact? Oh, naturally. We'll test it right away, too. <coughs> St. Bernard, help me. Ah, <coughs> Tilda, shush your yapping. Behold, my latest awe-inspiring purchase, the one and only... Vivi Paris, screw gun of Zephyrus. I have no idea what I'm looking at, but I love it. Howard takes a huge spiral shell from inside his robe and gives it to you. The seashell is truly remarkable. It is adorned with golden screws and emanates an ominous aura. Soft organic matter is falling out of the hole, like a flabby belly of a fat man. It's cold and springy. You look at long spikes and a single dried wing. What in the world is it? A joke of a bored taxidermist? Or a magical creature from another dimension? You return the seashell to Howard. <sighs> so, what's it do? This, uh, Vivi Porus Scrugan? Vivi Purvis, screw gun of Cephas. 
It summons the intergalactic goddess called Dom Supercut. The master of wishes, the empress of genies, the warlord of Golden City. This relic disrupts the natural flow of time and creates some sort of metaphysical distortion, which leads to multiple extraterrestrial disturbances, which lure out Dom Supercut. Because Dom Supercut it is absolute in her correlation to certain magnetic waves. You do understand what I'm talking about, right? Oh, oh dear, Howard. I'm not even convinced I pronounced any of that correctly. <laughs> I've understood one thing. This dumb suffocate is more than scary. She's the scariest. Please, Mr. Howard. You are planning to actually s summon her. I am not planning to. I am going to. To buy a vivipora screw gun of Cephas and leave it on a shelf as a pitiful dust collector? Do I look like an idiot? <sighs> Calm down. Tilda, buttercup. Be not afraid. Howard is having fun, that's all. Let him perform his silly ritual. We'll play along if needed. Oh no. Oh, you poor, poor, poor protagonist. Do you not understand this is how the end of the world starts? When you're letting them do the rituals, which inevitably actually works. There's no such thing as Durham Supercat. Anyway. <coughs> are you sh sure? Well, in that case, I'll try my b best to be courageous. <coughs> oh, Tilda, pull yourself together. Everything's going to be fine. Just do as I say. We'll start with a summoning spell. You will repeat the words after me. When Doom Tupacet emerges from beyond, she will be bound to grant a wish. That wish is mine. Got it? Good. Now, lastly, in case of emergency, the name of the goddess spelled backwards will end the ritual and send her back to the far reaches of space. Everyone's ready? One, two, three, go! Night terrors die! Night terrors die! It is your turn to speak! Oh, wait, I have to type this! What? Wait, night terrors die? Night? I don't know what the ritual is, I only saw the first part, night. Uh, terrors. Die? That's all I know. That's all I know of the ritual. I don't know anymore. Night terrors die. Am I doing good? Did I do it correctly? Night terrors die. Um, Theoda? Howard? Night terrors die. Oh well, one error is all it takes. We have to redo the spell. Do be more careful, please. I mean, you guys went awfully fast with the night terrors. Remember, every line starts with a capital letter. Yet no punctuation marks are needed. Alright, amigos. Here we go again. Night terrors die devoured by the flame. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, wait, okay. Uh... Night terrors. Wait, I'm not even typing! Oh, curses, I'm gonna die. Night terrors die devoured by flame. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm so close! Oh, I got one spelling mistake. Is, is that is that enough to, to get it wrong? Ah, curses. I am so close that time as well. We can do this. Okay. So night, terrors, die, devoured by the flame. Yes, yes, we've got it. Everything's spelled correctly, everything is perfect. Night, terrors, die, devoured by the flame. 
The sharpest fangs will disembowel reason. Oh my god. The sharpest fangs will disembowel reason. The sharpest fangs will disembowel reason. Is that correct? You are the mob impossible to tame. Oh my god. Really? Really? Why? You are the mob impossible. Oh my god. Uh, I didn't come here for a typing test. You are the mob impossible to tame. A horrid chorus, godly. All the same. Uh, a it chorus, godly all the same. Yes? Okay, we're doing it, we're getting, it. We're getting through this ritual. A horrid chorus, godly all the same. Praising the truest greed, no matter time or season. Okay, so praising... Praising the truest greed, no matter time or season. Yes? Yes, everything's fine. I can spell everything quickly. Praising the truest greed, no matter time or season. There we go, we did it! Oh, that was absolute hell. Oh, I did not enjoy that. Oh, I didn't... Ah. Okay. You never took Howard's historic nonsense seriously. To you, it was nothing but a fairy tale, pure fantasy. Nonetheless, you feel invincible forces set in motion, right here, right now. Erratic waves of powerful magic shake the walls. The air is buzzing with dark energy. Windows and crystal wine glasses, mirrors and bottles, everything vibrates making a sharp, high-frequency ringing. You notice Tilda taking cover behind a chair. A sudden flash. One more. Reality itself warps and stretches. The ceiling transforms into an open portal, a portal to other galaxies. And from that portal comes an impossible creature, unaffected by the law of physics. You know what? It's almost adorable. It's beautiful and horrifying. You can't take your eyes off its huge, ever-bubbling body. You are engulfed in its hot breath, and that breath smells like an ice surface of lost asteroids. You don't know how these asteroids smell, but the goddess knows, and thus you know too. Kompatom? <laughs> And Shukakor, Akbatir. The goddess stares in multiple directions at once, yet somehow you understand. She's looking directly at you. You are sweating buckets. What does she want? You turn to Howard for a hint. But Howard is frozen in silent awe. He's fallen on his knees, illuminated by the mysterious cosmic light. Talking to him is pointless. <laughs> The goddess is waiting for an answer. That much is obvious. But Howard stays silent until there is nowhere to be seen. You're fidgeting like a nervous schoolchild with unfinished homework. Why is she here? Why Howard summoned her? Wait. Right, exactly. To make a wish. If Howard lingers, who's going to make that wish? Oh, what the hell. Your wishes are objectively the best. You inhale loudly, ready to wish for something. You know what I want? What we all want in this world? I want to know. What is? The ultimate horror. No, even better. We want the ultimate horror game. Rate me pure perfection, if you don't mind. Uh, I mean, just saying, maybe just having that as a statement isn't good. We need to make it to wish. I wish for, there we go. I wish 
for the ultimate horror game. Perfect, that is exactly what we wish for. I wish for the ultimate horror game. I regret nothing. Dugly Karamin Charagobtus Jabortahu is the Golanoyam as is the person. The goddess makes a smug little gesture with one of her many insect legs. A tiny lightning runs through your skin. You're overwhelmed with a sudden joy. Your wish, your deepest dream. I wish for the ultimate horror game. Is granted, it came true, at last. There is no doubt about it. Baramur, the goddess licks her saggy bulldog lips. Now, when her job is done, she's waiting for a proper payment. What well, I mean, we could feed her the cat. Is that is that enough payment? She stretches out her razor claws, trying to catch your clumsy carcass. Uh, hold on, hold on. I've yet to play the ultimate horror game. Oh, maybe I should have wished to play it. Oh, this is my mistake. Is it your blood she aches for? Will nothing soothe her until you are dead and dismembered? You recoil in horror. You've angered the goddess. She's absolutely going to kill you. Telekinetically. But you don't give up easily. You do remember Howard's breathing. The name of the goddess, spelled backwards. Are you expecting me to type it? Because I don't even remember what the goddess is called. I did not make a note of it. We'll send her back to where she came from. The sacred ritual is almost over. It is time. You open your mouth and say the name. I don't know it. It was a very long name. You expect me to know this? You expect me to remember this name. Backwards. There we go, there's the name. I welcome death. I welcome death. You've made a mistake. Alas, a fatal one. Your head, your mind, everything that goes by me is pierced with unimaginable pain. This pain is white and scorching and all-consuming. You let out an irriting scream, a scream of a dying seal. It makes perfect sense. Your skull pops like a blister. You die. Damn, took cat. Flitters away. Okay, well there's the name I need, huh? Well, we're gonna make a note of that. Wait. Children Howard are alive. They bring fresh flowers to your grave. Here lies me. Forever restless, forever annoyed. Search is a punishment for fiddling with the occult. Go back in time. Okay, so her name. So I, I've got a bit of noun. It's just what spelling do you want? Do you want capitals at the start of her name, just technically the back of her name? Uh, R U H D. Is that what you want? Tickapet murder. Poof. Drum tickapet disappears in mere seconds. Much like she wasn't here at all. The only reminder of that squashy, doggish creature is a glittering puddle of god saliva. Your heart tap dances inside your throat. Your ears and fingers pulsate to the rhythm. You throw yourself into a chair, bone tired. The chair, more known as Tilda's hiding place. Ah, here she is. Long nose, sad eyes, everything is in order. Are you alive? Are you in pain? Are you alright? Are you angry at me? Oh, sugar plum, don't worry. I'm angry at someone else. Anger is bad for you. Scientifically proven fact. That's why eternal virtues are love and friendship. Right? Be gone, feline. You had successfully survived the rendezvous with an almighty alien creature. This fateful meeting with blasphemous magic and evil interdimensional power changed you a lot. 
Your oh-so-cynical worldview made a turn and a twist. Now you're amazed by every simple thing. By every simple thing that isn't trying to kill you. Green hills and feathery clouds. Cornflakes for breakfast and plushy slippers. Howard and Tilda always stick around. They are supportive and accept you fully. True friends for life. You are so indescribably grateful. Last weekend you went to the countryside. You taught Tilda how to ride a bike. At first she was afraid, but then come to enjoy it and even barked in pleasure. Magnificent friends and a wonderful happy end. Yes, as it turned out, Howard's lifelong wish was also kill me. Listen. Listen, I was in a lot of pain when I typed that wish, okay? Listen to me. You do not want to know how many times I failed the ritual and then I got the... Cause I, look, look, I was in a dark place. Don't judge me. I still want the ultimate hover game. Almost impossible, but happy coincidence. Hooray! Thank you for... Uh, thank you for playing with all my heart. No. I mean, I, I... It was cute, but we are not playing that again. I am in pain. Well, I hope you enjoyed that playthrough of Howard's new toy. I was not prepared for that ritual. This is going to take me a long time to recover from that torture. As always, if you want to check out the game, I'll leave the link in the description below. If you enjoyed your time here, then please don't like this video and subscribe to this channel. But other than that, it was a spooky day, and I'll catch you next time, guys.